Hey guys, me like big boom here and welcome to an unturned 3.0 base download tour tutorials video thing. Um, long time subscribers know that back in unturned 2.0 I did a tour of my huge base with the super tall tower all the different kinds of guns in it The huge garages had all the different cars. It was like triple stories. It was a pretty sweet base I made it available for download for you guys to be able to put it in your unturned 2.0 games and A lot more people ended up downloading it than I expected over 200,000 downloads were made of that world. 200,000. Are you freaking kidding me? That is insane. Now, surprisingly, I haven't done it in Unturned 3.0 yet. Uh, pretty much mostly because I forgot that you could even do it, and I forgot about it in general. And I also haven't had much time to make a base in the first place. Uh, so for the past few days, my friends and I have been working on a base over at Cape Rock. It's not exactly the most efficient placement of a base. It doesn't really have any sort of wells or fuel tanks or military spawn points nearby. I guess the military base is kind of close, uh, but it is definitely kind of the prettiest location. It's super high up. You have this huge road that goes straight to it and so that's where I've decided to build my base in this video I'm going to show you guys around this base that I built all the different cars that I have how to get around it, all the bedrooms and storage rooms and stuff like that and also at the end of the video I'm going to show you guys how to download it and be able to apply it and put it in your game if you guys want to skip straight to that tutorial click on the annotation on the screen right now and it will automatically bring you to that point in the video but in terms of the base I'm over here on the road between Stratford and Cape Rock. If you go up this road, oh, you can already see the base. If you go up this road, the road will reach what was the parking lot of Cape Rock, but it has now been replaced by my super grand fancy base that I built. And oh, it looks like the car is glitched out. It does that sometimes, I'll, I'll get to it. But essentially, I think I'm gonna start doing the tour on the bottom floor, which just serves as a garage, and then the top floor is for everything else, the storage and bed rolls and stuff like that. Um, on the bottom floor, it's three foundations wide, and it's, it's pretty close to the width of this road. There is a bit of a gap here, and it's flush on this side, uh, which does kind of bother me a little bit because it's not centered, but it's all right. So you can drive your cars up this road and into the building, and you can park it in these slots. I've already put some cars. I have a black off-roader, a blue roadster, an orange hatchback, a regular Humvee, an APC, a Ural. These two cars are glitched out, but I'll get into that later. A black sedan, green truck, and a red van. It's pretty simple. I put little ramparts to divide the uh, little parking spaces. They are too wide, so in case you want to replace any of these cars with longer vehicles, like an APC or a fire truck, you are free to do so, or maybe when the bus gets added later, you'll be able to fit these in all the slots. They're all too long. That's really all there is on the bottom floor. There are torches, and that's pretty much it. When you want to go up to the second floor, you can take either the left or right grand staircase. These are just uh, little ramps, pretty simple. And it has, it's kind of hard to explain, but really I can just show you. You have a, a faux staircase on the right side and a, another one on the left side, and they all meet in the middle for this grand entrance. I chose to not put any sort of doors or garages on these doorways, so that way you can put down metal ones yourself and be able to open them. There is a bit of a balcony right here, so you could shoot at other people. By the way, uh, you're also able to apply this to servers as well if you want to have this base in multiplayer games. But, I mean, you can shoot people who are coming in here, but that's not really the purpose. It's really just like a balcony. It kind of makes it look fancier, and then on the front end, that's just what it looks like. These are actually pine posts, but they look like maple posts. I think that's just a glitch with the game. Um, I think just they were accidentally made the same color as the maple posts. So those are in fact pine posts, I made sure. Maybe in an update they'll be fixed and then they'll be uh, matched to the same color as the pine pillars. Uh, but that's just the way it is right now. Um, and when you walk inside, there's a bit of, well, an empty little showroom here. And down below, if you remember, there was that orange and red roadster. These were actually meant to be up there. And if, like, directly up on top of here 
is where they originally were supposed to be. I had like indoor showrooms for the fancy cars because you know like rich people they really like their cars so anyway there was a roadster here two actually an orange and a red one and they were like all positioned nicely sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't if you apply this to your game I've had a few instances where it actually does position the cars like how they're supposed to be on this second floor and sometimes it just puts them down below if they spawn down below you're gonna have to rip a hole out of the roof and then <laughs> spawn in some new ones but yeah right now it's just empty and just imagine like there are cars there but the that's pretty much everything in the middle. Um, it does look very, very bright with all these torches. I was a bit stuck on whether or not I should put more torches and make it bright during daytime, because the problem is, is that if I set the time to nighttime right now, it's still very dark inside. I think just the torches don't have a very bright radius, which is kind of unfortunate. So it makes nighttime kind of dark and daytime very bright, so you just kind of can't win in this situation. But anyway, you can always turn these off, which is pretty nice. I decided not to do generators and spotlights, because then you have to upkeep the generators by filling them up with fuel. On the right of the entrance over here is just places where you can put, I guess, your shoes and coat or something. No, it's just storage. Just storage here. Uh, most of these bedrooms I've left empty or pretty close to empty, so that way you can choose how you want to lay everything out. Uh, but on the very right, this is a completely empty area. You can choose to make this storage, you can fill it up with bedrolls, you can fortify it, maybe make it a sniping base because you do have quite a view out here. Uh, there's a lot of barbed wire there, I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, but over here, uh, another bedroom. No, this is a storage room, which I've already filled with chests, or I guess crates now. Um, I decided not to do safes because that would have the issue where only I or the people in my group could open it. So I've just left them as crates. Everybody can open these. Keep in mind that these crates are empty. I didn't put anything in them. I was considering filling them up with like guns and explosives and stuff like that, but because you guys can spawn stuff, it's not really worth it. So I'm just gonna leave it up for you guys to put your own stuff in these crates. Uh, perhaps in the future, when Unturn moves to main branch and we can't spawn items anymore, then maybe I will fill these up with all sorts of different guns and then re-upload it. So that way you guys can take advantage of those without having to spend days finding your own but this is one storage room i also have one on the opposite over there but we'll get into that in a little bit this is another bedroom with four bed rolls which is kind of laid out to simulate two different beds like queen size beds but uh, once again you can fill the extra space with storage uh, back here is this other storage room that i talked about same layout and everything as that one over there this is another bedroom it's got two bed rolls in here once again more area for storage this is the same thing, except it's a lot bigger, and I've already put down some storage for you guys. Although there is extra room for you to put more elsewhere. But uh, two bedrolls over here, lots and lots more crates. These are pine crates, by the way. Um, this whole house, I've decided to do pine floors and roofs, and also pine pillars and posts, and maple walls and doorways and windows and all that stuff to kind of give it a high contrast kind of thing. Um, if it was all maple, then all the pillars and walls would be kind of the same color and it'd be very bland. So I have the dark and deep wood for the pillars and then the lighter wood uh, for the actual walls themselves. So I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, that pretty much covers everything inside the building itself, including the garage and up on the second floor. Out here by the lighthouse, it is something that we realized while we were building this that zombies actually spawn at the lighthouse. I mean, I knew that, but I, it didn't really come to mind when I was building the house here. Um, so zombies were spawning in the house, zombies were spawning outside and eating the walls and the pillars, and it was obnoxious. So most of the time was spent putting down barbed wire in this area. So I've lined barbed wire all along this wall, scattered it all along the floor, and on the inside of the first floor, which is inaccessible, I mean, it's laid out very weird and we decided not to use it because you already have a lot of room upstairs, but there is area inside of the first floor of this building that you can't actually go inside, uh, but it is completely coated in barbed wire. I might actually just bust a hole open in the wall so you guys can see, but that's there so that way if any zombies spawn inside the house, they will just instantly die 
from the barbed wire in there. Um, eventually, maybe after like six months, I'd say, of zombies spawning in and uh, being killed by the barbed wire, it might break and you might need to go in there and replace it, but it's very, very rare that you need to do that because we put so much barbed wire. So I'm just going to walk around here. I'm Well, I kind of can't walk around here from all this, uh, but I lined all the wall. It goes all the way up to that corner over there. It's just out of render distance and it is uh, five tall. Uh, pretty much the height of a player and then I've scattered all along the floor for the zombies that spawn outside the this lighthouse kind of around this general area like that guy so that way if he ever gets your attention when you're walking around the house he will just die like that <laughs> so they really can't go anywhere that was really the only zombie that spawned but the other ones I'm assuming probably did spawn when I first bloated this world but they just instantly died because they spawned on top of the barbed wire that guy just got lucky enough uh, to spawn in between the barbed wire and he ended up dying because he tried to chase me. So behind these, you can see, <laughs> this is what the, the inside looks like. We kind of stopped here because we, it was, we were so done, but the whole entire inside of the first floor is completely coated in barbed wire. Anyway, that pretty much covers this whole entire base. There is a, a lot more stuff that I'd like to do to it. Uh, I'd like to add a bridge that goes across here, maybe add some extra outposts here and there around the different areas and maybe fortify this area a little bit more. Uh, but this is the way it is right now. In the future, whenever I add stuff to this world, I will always just post a little new update video for a new download link as usual, just like I did in Uncharted 2.0. But this really does mark the beginning or the first base download video of Unturned 3.0. So now I'm going to show you guys how you can download this world and in order to show you that it actually works I need to show like a before and after to make sure it works so I'm going to need to destroy this base and then download the new one to show you guys that it actually does work so we're just going to destroy all these guys. Ah okay well that didn't take very long at all but the whole entire base is pretty much destroyed and now we're going to go out of the game and show you how to download this. So first step is to make sure you know what character you want to apply this save to because some of you guys might not know but each different character in the character screen here has its own save. So we need to figure out which one we're going to overwrite. Uh, the top one is save number one, this one's number two, three, four, five, and five is at the bottom. Currently I am on save number five. On number five is the one with the destroyed base. So we're going to make sure to replace the barricade and structures and vehicle files for single player number five. So let's say you currently have an awesome base and you don't want it to be overwritten one thing just to make sure you don't accidentally overwrite it is to go into single player and watch the loading screen see it currently says single player number five down below and if you still need to know after that you can press escape and it will say PI on single player number five and you can see in this instance this is the one with the destroyed base if in your instance you have your awesome base in this then make sure to swap to a different character and write down what save that is so from here we can leave the game. Now I know that I need to replace single player number five in order to get this awesome base. So from here you're gonna right click unturned, go into properties, local files, and browse local files. You're gonna go into servers, and you will see all the different saves that you've played on. In here, it's gonna be different for you. I, from time to time, run a LAN server for when friends come over, and then also I have only played single player games on my first character, second character, and fifth character. So the world that I wanna replace is single player number five, so we're gonna go into the single player five folder. You'll be greeted with levels, player, and server, then go into level, PI, and then these are the three files that we're gonna to wanna to replace. Just in case, I'd highly recommend you take these out and put them in a backup folder just in case you accidentally deleted your world, but it's just an extra precautionary measure. From here, you can open up the zip file that you can download in the description down below for the mansion and open it with any sort of unzipping program. Uh, you're going to see inside that zip folder is barricades, structures, and vehicles.dat, just like in this folder here, which is the one that we're going to want to replace. And all you're going to do is you're going to take the ones from the zip folder drag it in there and replace all three different files and you're done. From here you can close everything and head back into the game. Just to make sure I'm gonna go see if I'm still on character number five which I am and from here we can go back into single player click on PEI and click play. You will now see that when I plop in we now have all the cars here as usual everything is back to normal and it also turns out 
that the two vehicles did not end up being glitched out and they're actually in their little showroom up here like how they were supposed to. Very nice. Hopefully the vehicle spawned like this for you guys. Let me know if there are any issues. But anyway, that is how you download this awesome new base. Keep in mind that it will always be adding new things in the future. If you have any suggestions for me to add to this world in general, be sure to comment that down below. But other than that, that is all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and do all that gibberish because me like big boom is out.